You're listening to Eat, Play, Sex with Dr. Cat, the place to uplevel that sexy life of yours with expert talk on sex, love, and nutrition. Wow. Do you remember one, do you have an experience that you've had that you can recall that was very transforming for you in, the, in, your, in this line of work? Maybe a moment where you felt really empowered or where you felt that shift happen from shame to, to um, self-empowerment. You know, I don't know if I can pinpoint one. Well, actually, yeah, I can pinpoint one specific experience. Um, and I have received some interesting criticism for it um, from sharing it in the past. And it's also in my book. Um, because there is a substance involved, which is also something we can touch on. Uh, someone came in on, as many people do, on MDMA, ecstasy, which I think most people know what that is, right? I think your, your audience probably knows what ecstasy is. Maybe, maybe not, but yeah, ecstasy, <laughs> pills, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's something that a substance that induces euphoria and it was something that was created for marriage counseling actually. So the couple would take it and they would fall madly in love with each other again, if they were having some sort of issue. So you can imagine when people take this, they're, they're really, they're happy, they're euphoric. So they come in and they're super sensitive and like all their senses are heightened. So one of the the customers came in on MDMA and, uh, I was not aware until after we had gone back in the champagne room uh, and we had this really deep, intimate conversation for hours. Uh, And it was about, you know, how he wanted to change the way that he lived his life. And I was just expressing to him, you know, how incredible of a person he was because he was sharing with me his whole history. And it was a very, um, just like sounds connecting intimate. with a really good friend. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very sounds intimate. really in- Wow. So having that moment where you would, that's pretty surprising that somebody would be so vulnerable in front of you at a strip club. <laughs> this is something that happens a lot. Strippers are therapists, basically. We're oh just therapists without the degree. Oh, I'm doing the wrong job. <laughs> Okay. So he's opening up to you. He's telling you all about his struggles, his challenges in life. And then what? Yeah, it was a really beautiful connection. And I really enjoy being with people who are on MDMA because I have my own deep experience with it. So I, I want to uplift those people and like have them. It was exciting to just have an experience with him that was positive and he said over and over, I didn't expect for this to happen at a strip club. And like, I thought I was just going to come back here and like get aroused and get a sexy dance and whatever. And now I'm like feeling like I want to change my life and Mm. I'm in love with you. Of course, that's (laughs) part of the whole experience too. (laughs) The part of it, it is not, this is just like the, the small piece. The bigger part of it was when he sought me out some five or six years later in a different club in a, in a different part of the country and said, I needed to reconnect with you because that experience changed my life and everything I do has completely changed since that moment. Wow. Um, and I think, I think that was like, that was the divine moment for me. I was like, okay, I can stop dancing now. (laughs) Okay, so that, that, because that made you feel fulfilled. And I also, I figured that if that had happened with him, that if I always carry that same intention, that that probably happened with other people too. And I didn't have their information, so it wasn't, wasn't like they could come seek me out somewhere else, you know? It wasn't like I could confirm that. Right, right. And so there's... Again, this lends to you know, this idea of intention. Like, what are we holding? And um, 
allowing that to influence the experience of what, uh, what unfolds there. So this can be really healing, especially if somebody is holding that space, like you are, you're holding this space for this guy. You're being very present to him. And yes, you're dancing, you're providing a beautiful art for this person, but you're also you know, holding that space of non-judgment and such a vulnerable environment where so many things can come up and be activated. And I can imagine that that just transforms for a person where how often do, do people just sit and be present with us to hear us? Yeah, absolutely. And that is also a big part of my book. And uh, I recorded a video for the book campaign um, it was over a year ago now. Mm -hmm. And the biggest point in there was presence. And I think that people are, I really do believe that people are coming in the club looking for that and they don't realize it. And that's what they're really paying for. They're paying for that presence. They're paying for someone to hold that space for them. And they, they might not have the words to articulate it or even the understanding of it, but after they get it, they realize that's what they wanted. That's what they were craving. The intimate connection. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing about your book, cause I, I got the honor to read your book ahead of time. Yay. Go me. And in throughout the book, there's some really fun, playful interactions with you and the other women that are also in the same profession, which is such a, you know, behind the scenes, like we get to view what it's like. And there's this almost like the sisterhood of um, empowering each other that's going on that I honestly wouldn't have thought of. Because again, of the socially, social um, image that we've been given, that it's, that it's dark, that it's seedy, that women are you know, just in it for the money or whatever, or men are just in it for the sex. Yeah, can you explain uh, what that was like for you among those sisters? Mm, that is another thing I deeply miss, especially in these past over six months being here in Costa Rica, writing out this quarantine. <laughs> Uh, the sisterhood. Yeah. I did mention um, in the end of my book, very specific women that I connected with that we would just, everything really resonated. Um, but there was one specific club that I worked at in the San Francisco Bay area that was close to my home where these women were working at this club for quite a long time. Some women had been at this club for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So they had become really close. It was a really tight knit circle of women. And it wasn't possible to be there and not support each other because it would just, we had a tiny little dressing room we were in and it was, we needed to support each other basically. And it felt so much better and everyone did better. And the, we made more money and the clients left happier. It, it just worked better to work together. Um, and it was just so much more fun. And that's definitely not something that I thought was possible when I first started dancing. And that wasn't really there either. When I first started dancing there, the women were really, you know, they would isolate themselves from each other. Um, mm. So that was unique actually that I found that. And it was something that I strive for. It was my intention. I started serving combo, uh, which I can explain a little bit in a second, but I started serving combo to some of the women and then they would tell each other and they'd come to work with these markings on them from receiving this medicine. And um, <laughs> I started bringing them together like that. And they were like, oh, we, we can feel better and then we do better at work. And it was just this whole elevating thing. It was like, yeah, full on sisterhood. How can we support each other to be better and do better? Hmm. And, and you just touched on something there in that sentence. You said, we can feel better and we can work better. So, uh, so a relationship between how we feel in our body and how we can show up in life or show up in this, um, even in our sexuality. That is huge for me. That is my whole mission with my work um, and why, <laughs> why I've branded the pure way because I really believe in purifying this vessel so that we can truly experience this life fully, experience more pleasure. And just when we are mindful of, of that just well-being in that way, 
it extends, yeah, it, every area of life is uplifted, definitely sex and all of that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that that's wisdom that every person on this you know, who's listening to the show right now can take away with them, you know, taking care of this body, this vessel that carries us and expresses for us and how that, you know, does translate into our ability to become fully expressed and especially around sexuality. And that, you know, as we're thinking about our audience here, how can they, what are some things that they can learn from you as this, you know, sensual seductive expert (laughs) and, Uh and to be able to carry it on into their everyday lives or with their partners at home? Yeah, just to to go on that same thread, um, the I, the mindfulness of everything that you're putting in, on, and around your body is affecting the way that you're experiencing life, um, your connection with others, and how well you do in in whatever endeavor it is. Um, I really am a huge advocate for. I guess another way to say it is holistic living. Mm. Lost you for a second. I I believe that a a great deal of the way that I experienced dancing and stripping was it it was a result of the way that I was living my life, and that was really being mindful of all you know exactly what I just mentioned, holistic living, and also promoting that in the club and being an advocate for that among the girls, among the women, and even the clientele that would come in and they'd say, Hey, what do you, what is that jar you're carrying around? And like, what is that stuff floating in it? And I'm like, it's spring water with pieces of organic ginger in it. (laughs) It was just (laughs) like this opportunity to teach. Lovers. Thank you again for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, hit subscribe and head over to eatplaysex.com to connect with me and grab my sexy guides. Because my goal here is to get you to eat, play, and sex better so you can improve your sex life, which will improve every aspect of your life. Until next time, keep it sexy.